All right, this is TheEdgeOnAir.com. It's the Advocates for Change. Everett O'Neill, Tim Funches, Paul Shabari here. Um, we're entering the home stretch. 630-785-2510 is the number. Call in with comments, questions, or if you just want to let it all out. You know, we're here. Um, it's been a very productive day. Special thanks to Naima Jackson, um, Calvin Calico Coleman for calling in and uh, giving their stories and, you know, just what it is they're contributing to, um, you know, to the betterment of our community. Um, but once again, we're going to focus more on the positives. Um, I don't know what's going on right now, but just keep going. Improvise. Yeah, we don't have our, our, our <laughs> caller. Not yet. Um, you know, I hadn't had a chance to uh, yet. I wanted to say um, we're talking about, you know, some of the the different things back. We were kind of talking about the kind of different social activities, different things in the community that, um, you know, ki youth can do to kind of keep themselves out of trouble. And um, we were also kind of touching upon, like, maybe the lack of a parental figure. Um, one charity I am, I'm really passionate about that um, a friend of mine works for that um, I, I have donated to is Big Brothers Big Sisters. Yeah especially the Chicago chapter as well. Uh, I have a friend that works there. And, and you know, they'll have you know, various different types of fundraisers. And, um, you know, I've helped her out where, you know, un unfortunately on the, the nonprofit level sometimes the people that work there have to do um, things to kind of help motivate their individual, you know, uh, donations that, the, that they achieve. And, um, and uh, they, you know, so so it was, uh, you know, that, that's usually when when I get involved with that that sort of thing. Absolutely. Uh, so yeah, Big Brother Brick Sister is definitely uh, something that a lot of us should probably look at. Um, we have uh, our next guest on the line. We have Kevin Ferguson of the Ray Organization, if I'm correct. Yes. How's it going, Kevin? Thanks. Welcome to the show. Oh, it's going good. It's going good. Thanks for having me. Oh, not a problem. So uh, we're advocates for change and. Um, we've been spending about the past hour and a half, you know, just talking about a lot of the uh, the nonsense that's been happening, you know, not only in uh, the town, in the city of Chicago, but also, uh, you know, with the recent tragedies in Ferguson. And just, um, you know, just it's, it's a culmination of a lot of things. You know, you have stories like Michael Brown and you, the Trayvon Martins and the Oscar Grants. Um, you have the nine-year-old who was executed last week. And, um, you know, people are frustrated. And... Um, I guess the question that I was posing, that I want to pose to you, is you know, tell us a little bit about your organization, and um, you know, the objectives that um, you know you're trying to come across. Well, uh, the organization, Ray organization, is uh, an acronym for Reclaim AG. Um and what we was we really want to do uh, is we want to get out to the community and do just that, reclaim the youth. We want to reclaim the youth um, by showing uh, positivity in the community. We want to provide them with. Uh, outlets. We want to provide them with investment strategies. We want to provide them with things to do, such as going to uh, the Chicago Sky uh, women's basketball, uh, sometimes the NBA games. We've had picnics. Um, but the main goal of Ray is to, it's a scholarship organization um, as well. Um, and what we want to do is we want to reach back into the community that um, is affected by violence, um, is affected by, um, you know, youth being you know, shot, killed, taken from their family, they just don't have any way to look for a role model. Um, I am the, the chairman of what's called the Youth Advisory Committee, um, and that what that portion of Ray uh, does is speak directly to the youth in a certain age bracket. Um, there is like 5 to uh, 11, uh, 11 to 15, and 15 to 21, which I'm trying to expand that um, a little greater. And what we do is uh, we just outreach. We stay in, we stay in uh, the youth here. Uh, we talk to them via social media. Uh, we have events that they can come to. We have uh, picnics, banquets. Uh, we have a Watch the Manners class where the youth are starting to learn uh, manners again, chivalry. I mean, think about it. When's the last time um, you've seen somebody 14 or 15 out on a first date? Um, you know, open the door for a young lady. Um, do they know what work to use when they're out? If you begin to teach the youth uh, some of these things to help mature them, um, they can take all of that energy that they're putting out to the street uh, into something positive, and that's the main objective of uh, rest. Good, good, good. Now, you're constantly in interaction with the youth. Um, tell us, you know, what the mindset and energy is like with some of them. 
uh, the mindset of the youth. I mean, honestly, um, there's some good kids out here. Um, a lot of them feel like nobody cares. Uh, they feel like that people are just kind of going their own way and leaving them to raise themselves. Um, and they're not blaming their parents. I believe that they feel like the community is, is that way. Um, you know, they, I, I feel like they have a lot of just pent up energy um, that's just misdirected. They want somebody to take them under their wing and show them some things. I really think they're starting to get bored with traditional style of doing things. They're actually really smart, um, but we treat them like, like they're not that smart. And when I say we, I mean the older generation. We tend to treat them like um, they're not that smart. And that's because a lot of times we don't understand their, their creativity. We don't understand the communication style. Um, and I just feel like that they're looking for a lifeline, somebody out there to help direct them and guide them. And that's what I'm hearing from all the youth out there, that the older generation is just kind of leaving us to die. Actually, that is a, a great point because that's not something that we talked about is, you know, the the age gap. You know, it, it's a different time. You know, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of our grandparents came up a different way and, you know, now it's 2014. And so, you know, those norms are kind of dying off and, you know, new ways of life and, you know, outlooks and lifestyles are, are changing. And, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of the older people don't really want to bother to understand you know, the youth. And I mean, you know, the people in the studio, we aren't that old. And so we can relate. You know, a lot of us mm-hmm. grew up in that time, too. And I was just wondering, you know, as, you know, young adults, you know, how can we help bridge that gap? Um, you know, that's a tough one. Um, I, I think that as a younger, as a young person, bridging that gap with, um, with your parents is a little bit more difficult than parents trying to bridge that gap. Um, but I would say, that what, what we should do as young adults is try to meet in the middle somewhere. Um, understand that your parents are not accustomed to reading a text message um, all the time, and you guys are accustomed to reading a text message. Um, you know, you guys, and well, we all need to come together and kind of get a common way of communicating and interacting. Um, I think we as older people, uh, we have to understand that you, you, communicate a lot different than what we did. We didn't have cyber bullies. There was no such thing. A bully had to be tough and big um, and really able to knock me out in order to be a bully. Now, I mean, it could be a little pit sweet behind a computer um, and bully somebody. We yeah. didn't have that when we were younger. So it takes, it takes the adults to say, you know what, this is a whole different time, this is a whole different era, um, and to reach out and try to understand that. But it also takes the youth to kind of mature a little bit say, you know what, I understand that I communicate different than my parents, and instead of um, getting on social media and blasting my parents out to a group of people who have not been through anything, who may be, let's say that you're 19 or 25, um, and something goes on in your life, you get on social media, well, more than likely, you're speaking to 19 to 25-year-olds, and they're going through the same thing, and they can't help get you out of it. Instead of doing that, what you should do is go to your parents or go to somebody who has kind of been through a second and once that begins to happen, we can bridge the gap of communication because the youth are reaching out in on the platform that the adults can understand, and that will start to yield the adults to reach out to the youth on a platform that they can understand. So it's just going to take some social maturity as as a whole uh, yeah. to really bridge the gap. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm going to try to tie all this together. All right. So we were just talking about the bridging of the gap, and we're going to we're talking about your program. A little earlier, you know, we were talking about programs. Um, you know, that would give the youth, um, you know, a means to, you know, to, to give them some sense of worth because mm-hmm. the problem is is that, you know, some of the youth in these areas don't feel like they have anything to provide to society. Um, mm-hmm. okay. You know, a lot of us were fortunate to, um, you know, involve ourselves in programs. Like I said earlier, I was involved in sports. You know, I did theater. Uh, mainly sports, you know, provided me with the idea that, you know, I, I, I mean something to someone and that, you know, nothing happens if I don't contribute. And, you know, they just need to – what am I trying to say here? Back me up. I guess, like, they, they need something – they need something to mean something. They need they need to mean something. And, you know, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, um, the Ray organization are all – you know, good foundations for that. Right. But, you know, we can only do, we can only be with them for so long. 
And a, a, a recent a, a, a guest from not too long ago was saying that, you know, how can we make sure that, you know, that mindset stays implemented once they go home? Mm-hmm. And I just wanted to know, like, what, what, what's your idea on that or, you know, your your uh, your thoughts? Well, I would say that you're absolutely right. Um, we need to continue uh, to grow uh, the, the community of, of organizations that actually reach out um, so that that mindset continues. That means that we honestly need to form organizations for better parents. Um, let me, as a 35-year-old, own this for a minute. Um, and what we do as parents nowadays, and I, I'm probably not guilty of it because I'm not 50 and I don't have a 20-year-old, um, but what I'm seeing that the parents of today um, that have a 17-year-old, a 15-year-old, or these kids that are out there rising in the neighborhood, um, what we're doing is we're leaving those kids to raise themselves. We're leaving those kids to an organization like Ray or Big Brother Preach Sister because they're supposed to do it. Because I'm so busy running the rat race trying to get mine, right? I was I was 16 when I had my child, but now I'm 26. Um, and my child is 10. I'm still trying to get on in life. We really need to start an organization that can help parents that are 20 to maybe 30, 35 to continue to instill these things. Big Mama's raising them now. But what happens when Big Mama passes on? Little Mama or the real mom doesn't is not even equipped herself um, to instill any of the morals or, as you just put it, to reiterate some of the concepts that we're teaching their children in an organization like Big Brother Big Sister or Ray of, or- Ray of Illinois or uh, Youth Advisory Council. So what needs to happen, I think the, the best thing or so one of the biggest things that we can do to help change the community is actually, I don't want to call it parenting class, but an organization that opens it up to young parents to give them some of the same concepts that we're trying to give their children so that when it goes home, just like homework, if you're not good in, in math and your parents aren't good at math, over to you. Well, think about this. If your mom's not good at life and you're in an environment that you're probably not going to be good in life, well, it's over for you. Uh, so well, how do you change that? What you have to do is, just like your homework, you got to go get a tutor. And I think an organization that provides like a tutor to the parents uh, will really help to really bridge it, to really help to reiterate and reinforce these things that are going home. Because we can do everything forever and ever and ever. Your coach, uh, you said you play sports. Your coach could, could, could motivate you. Your coach could say, hey, you know what? You're, you're going to be great. You just you got leadership beyond a shadow of a doubt, and you're going to be awesome one day. But when you go home and your mother doesn't understand how to reinforce that, and she says, you ain't going to be nothing. You lady just sitting there watching candle all day. Well, what is that doing to your site, and who are you going to follow? And I think the choice that's being made is that they're following the parents that's downing them more often than the coach. Because you might follow the coach, but what about all the other 40 or 50 kids that were on that team? What about, you know, the thug on the corner who, you know, he rose up in his, you know, what, what we got now, A7 or in his Escalade, and he got something. And so I'm going to follow him because the coach, he, he ain't doing nothing with his life. He's just a coach. And so I think we need something like that put in place um, as a society. I mean, I, I think that is probably the easiest way to fix the problem. Sorry for getting long with it there, but I'm happy. That's okay, man. Um, you you got some um, pretty awesome points and, and definitely uh, in depth because <laughs> we needed to get there, you know. Um, so, and, and first off, you know, I want to thank you for taking the time to come on and you know and speak with us and talk about your organization. Um, from what I understand, you have a lot more going on as well too, uh, motivational speaking, and you know just just building up individuals to to be better. Um, at life, so to speak. So I, I definitely have to say thank you for for providing us with a little bit of the insight that you guys have, and we look forward to to uh, attending a couple of those events over there, Ray. Oh, well, we definitely look forward to having. You. Okay, so um, I appreciate you again, man. Um, once again, this was Kevin Ferguson of the Ray Organization. Um, uh, I, just a quick question: um, How can people get involved with the Ray Organization? Uh, you can get involved with the Ray organization. Um, you can actually find us on Facebook, um, and that's just Ray, R-A-Y, Reclaim the Youth. Um, or anybody who is interested in to wants to speak with me to get on the Youth Advisory Council can reach out to just myself at Kevin Ferguson 2009 at Hotmail, 
Um, and then, you know, we'll just link up from there. All right, thank you so much. Kevin Ferguson of the Reagan Organization here on Advocates of Youth. We're going to take a short break. And uh, when we come back, we're going to wrap things up. It's eadjoinair.com, Advocates for Youth. I mean, Advocates for Change. Mm-hmm. 